Hey guys, it's Trevor coming to you with another video and today we are going to talk about how to build PowerShell functions that support pipelining. So as you're probably familiar with, different shell environments allow you to take the output from one command and pipe that into another command for some additional processing. So you can build these complex pipelines and you know, create very complex sets of commands that run one after the other. Uh, some people call them one-liners, but the idea is that basically you can declare all your commands in kind of a, a long string, and that data starts on the left and it just keeps going down the pipeline from command to command. And of course, PowerShell supports pipelining just like other shells such as Bash. So the key difference that you need to be aware of with PowerShell pipelining versus uh, you know, traditional pipelining in other shells like uh, text-oriented shells like Bash, for example, is that in PowerShell, we are dealing with objects instead of just mere text. So it's important to think about each item that's going through your pipeline as being an object. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore how to build a PowerShell function and then how to specifically add pipelining support into that function. So let's go ahead and start by just declaring a function. So we'll call this uh, say hello. And inside the function body, we're just going to say write output input object hello. So if we, I need, I need to hit control K M to change my language mode to PowerShell here. That's why I wasn't getting the syntax highlighting and the validation and all that stuff. So now I've got this function say hello. And if I hit F5, it's just going to run it. It's going to declare the function in my global scope and it'll be available for me to run, right? So I can come over here and just do say hello and we get hello as our output from the function. But what if I wanted to be able to say a bunch of different phrases and pipe those into the command, and the command is only responsible for outputting whatever was piped into it. So what we could do is take this hello string and pipe it into say hello, but this hello in our function is currently hard-coded into the function. So every time we run that function, it's just gonna output hello. So how do we take this input to the function and make it parameterized so that this text is whatever's piped in, right? So what we can do is convert this function from a basic function to an advanced function. And the way that you do that in PowerShell is using what's called the commandlet binding attribute. Now, when you add the commandlet binding attribute, you also are required to have a parameter block so even if you don't plan on adding any parameters to your function, which we are in this case, but even if you're not going to add any func uh, function parameters, then uh, commandlet binding does require you to have an empty parameter block. So as you can see, if I take out that parameter block, it starts to complain. If I hover over and look at that message, it says, hey, it's an unexpected attribute, commandlet binding. Uh, and of course, it fixes itself when I add the parameter block, right? So that's step number one, is to take that basic function and convert it to an advanced function. But there's something else at play here that isn't necessarily obvious, especially if you're new to PowerShell and building PowerShell functions, and that is the concept of uh, three, three different blocks inside of your PowerShell functions. So there's a begin block, a process block, and an end block. And basically, each of those blocks is executed at different stages of the PowerShell pipeline. So when you declare a function the way that we have it here right now, so I basically just have, you know, inside the function body, I've got my commandlet binding and my parameter block. And then anything that comes after the parameter block is considered the, the function's body. But if we actually explore this function a little bit, I'm going to come over here to my interactive window. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. Sorry. I'm going to do get command oh, dash name uh, say hello. And basically what I'm doing by calling get command is I'm 
retrieving a reference to the say hello function that I have declared in the global scope. So on the right here in my output, you can see I've got this command, this function object. Um, unfortunately, I can't see all of the parameters. So what I'm gonna do is do format list and tell it to spit out all of the properties of that function object. So I'm actually using the pipeline here to say, get me my function object and then pipe it into this formatting command that just changes how PowerShell displays that object that's being piped into it out to the console. So if I hit F8 on line number eight there, it'll run that and we can now see all of the detailed information about my function. Now, what you'll notice here is that we have a bunch of different properties that represent the function. We have the name property, so that's of course just the function's name. Uh, PowerShell also breaks the function name down into the verb and then the noun because uh, by convention, PowerShell functions typically are verb dash noun. They don't have to be, it's not strictly enforced, but it is recommended. And uh, PowerShell actually you know, breaks down those, those components here. And you also see that we have the definition and the script block. So let's go ahead and assign the result of this get command command to a variable. And that'll make it a little bit easier to explore. So I'm basically going to get my function and store it in this command variable because that'll allow us to explore the uh, child properties like script block and definition, which are actually uh, complex objects in and of themselves. So if we take a look at the definition here, the definition, as you can see here, is a string. So it's going to return us a string value to us. So let's go ahead and hit F8. And sure enough, we just get a string that represents the body of this function. However, let's go over to command.script block. Now, the script block is going to look like a string, similar to the definition. But when we retrieve the script block, we're actually getting back what's called a PowerShell script block object. And we can explore that in a bit more detail as well. So I'm going to do format list property star again so that we can see all of the components. Um, it's actually not listing out there. So let me do select star. Okay, so doing the select object property star is a little bit better here. So this is actually going to show us all of the different parameters here. I'm actually just going to do a quick clear and then rerun that. So as you can see, we have this script block object and we have this thing called the abstract syntax tree that allows us to drill down even further within that object. So let's grab the AST. And you can see that we basically have this uh, body, extent, and parent. So we're getting down into the weeds a little bit. But what I wanted to point out is that we actually have a few different components to the function body. We have the begin, process, and end block. Uh, so let's go ahead and drill into the body here. And so now as we are drilling into the function script block abstract syntax tree, which is kind of a representation of the uh, script blocks structure, and then the body property, you can now see the individual components that make up this particular uh, script block. So here we've got the begin block, which is empty, the process block, which is also empty, and the end block, which has the contents of our function body here. So that write output command is actually being assigned to what's called the end block. And just for reference, this body object is actually a script block in itself. So there's a little bit of inception-like stuff going on here where we have a, you know, a script block that's part of a script block, but it's part of its abstract syntax tree. Don't worry too much about the details here. The key takeaway is that you have a begin, process, and end. And when you declare a function and you don't explicitly 
declare the begin process and end blocks in the function. As you can see here, by default, your function body is only going to be assigned to the end block of the function. And what that means is that because we don't have a process block, we can't pipe in uh, information into the function and use the uh, iteration capability that's built into PowerShell Advanced Functions. So what we're actually going to do is change the function to explicitly call out a begin, process, and end block. And then once we've declared those blocks, what we're going to do is specify an input parameter. We're going to map the pipeline input to that parameter, and then we're going to use that process block to iterate over each of the items in the array or in the, uh, in the pipeline input. So let's go ahead and just declare a parameter here called um, message. And the message parameter is going to contain, it's going to basically map to the pipeline input. And how do we do that? Well, there is a parameter attribute called parameter. And then inside the parameter attribute, you'll have a property called value from pipeline. And so value from pipeline is basically going to take whatever's in the pipeline and it's going to map it specifically to this parameter. And we're going to set that property to true in this parameter attribute. So now we are set up in this function to accept input from the pipeline and it'll get mapped to that message parameter. So in theory, you would think, hey, we can just change the uh, message that we're printing out, and that should work, right? So let's go ahead and try that. So I've updated my function declaration, and sure enough, it looks like it's working OK. We've passed that message input from the pipeline, and uh, we, we print out the hello message to the console here, right? So let's try that with an array. So let's say we have two different messages that we want to print separately to the pipeline. So hello and Trevor. So those are two strings in an array, and we're going to pipe that array into the function. So what is the output that we get? Well, this is not quite what we were expecting, right? We would have expected hello to get printed out, and then on a new line, we would have expected Trevor to get printed out. But unfortunately, what happened here is only Trevor got printed out. And that's because only the end block of our function was actually defined as we looked at earlier. So what do we have to do to fix this? Well, inside of your PowerShell function body, you can actually define a begin block, a process block, and an end block. So you can actually do this explicitly, or you can just do the implicit form, which is to leave these out, and your function body gets mapped to the end block as we discussed earlier. And you can see, now that I've explicitly declared those begin, process, and end blocks, I'm actually getting this error saying unexpected closing curly brace. And that's because I have a, a PowerShell statement here that should be inside one of those blocks, but it's not. So I now have to explicitly move that into the block that I want it to be in. And now everything validates OK. However, when you're piping content in an array into a function and you want to iterate over that array and pr process the data, you need to put your function body into the process block. So begin is going to get called once when that function is initially invoked. The process block is going to iterate once for each object in the array that's being piped into the function. And then the end block, after it's finished, is going to uh, finish. So you can use that for things like doing counters, for example, or writing, um, you know, progress messages to initialize your progress and then send like a completion message or something like that. There's a bunch of different use cases for why you would want to do that. But for the time being, let's just keep it simple and take a look at how to use the process block. Now, inside the process block, when you're using pipe pipelined input like we are here, there is what's called an automatic variable in PowerShell called input. So what you can do is do get help on about automatic variables. Try to do tab completion. Looks like it's not going to work. 
Let me try that. Uh, looks like the help system is broken still. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later, or you can actually just view it in a web browser as well. You can just Google for the uh, documentation on that. But basically, just know that there is a special variable called input, and that variable is accessible just inside the process block when you are piping input in. So all we have to do is make sure that that write output statement is moved from the end block into our process block of our function and that we change the variable to input. And you'll, you'll notice that it's not actually message in this case because message refers to all of the parameter input, not just the current item. So let's go ahead and just run this. We'll hit F5 here. And uh, of course, I still have my get help command, which should not be in there. But what you'll notice here is that the function output hello and then Trevor. So this is actually demonstrating that our pipelining is working correctly. So we have this array that contains two strings. We're piping it into the say hello function. And then the say hello function is taking that message parameter. It's mapping it to this special variable called input. And we're processing that data. In this case, we're just emitting it to uh, standard output here, but um, we're, we're doing some processing on that data on a per object basis. So let's go ahead and just kind of demonstrate what it looks like if you were to add a begin and end block here. So I'll do write output um, beginning the processing function, and then I'll copy that line and paste it down here in the end block, and I'll just change this to ending the processing function. So let's go ahead and hit F5 to run this again. And you'll see now the output. So the begin block in our function runs. And then we iterate over each item on the pipeline input using that process block. And then finally, in the end block here is where it runs the end block and it, and it just finishes the function. That's where that's kind of the overall processing flow of a PowerShell advanced function. So um, yeah, that was really just the main goal of this video is to show you kind of the different components of a PowerShell advanced function. And by doing so, demonstrating to you how to implement pipeline input for your PowerShell functions. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. Uh, that helps encourage me to create more content like this in the future. Uh, check out my Patreon page if you would like to financially support this channel and make sure that you smash that subscribe button and uh, get notified about new videos when they are published out to my channel. So thanks for watching. I appreciate your support and please share this with your friends. Uh, just helps get more visibility and uh, let me know in the comments what other kind of videos you would like to see in the future. Cheers.